UAE to build Mars training city here on Earth. The United Arab Emirates is preparing to go to Mars. The UAE is planning to build a $136 million city here on Earth called Mars Science City, which consists of interconnected dome structures that will span 1.9 million square feet. According to Popular Science, the city will be used by engineers to prototype future Mars building materials and construction techniques. It will also house labs that can simulate various parts of Mars' environment. Researchers will practice several methods of farming on light resources as Mars lacks water and nutritious soil. Waste and water recycling methods will also be tested. With Mars radiation being stronger than on Earth, the domes will be used to test material that can block solar radiation. The Dome City will also be able to filter in more or less sunlight, possibly to better mirror Mars' time. The UAE plans to have a team of people to live in the city for a year to develop strategies for surviving long-term on the Red Planet. Besides laboratories, the proposed city will also contain a museum dedicated to space achievements. Keep watching for more Out of This World stories. More space junk to fall to Earth. There's a whole lot of junk about to enter Earth's atmosphere at Trunk. According to Space.com, the rocket body of an Indian Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle is expected to fall to Earth around April 3rd. It weighs 907 kilograms. Part of a European Space Agency satellite is also expected to drop to Earth on the same day. Fortune reports that Kazakh spacecrafts Flock 2E3 and 2E6 are expected to plummet to Earth on Wednesday and on Friday this week. Popular Science reports that 200 parts of space debris fell to Earth in 2014 and 400 fell in 2016. Most land in the Pacific Ocean. The only person known to have been hit by falling debris is Lottie Williams. She was walking in a park in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1997 when she was struck by a 6-inch chunk of metal traveling at a low speed from behind. Scientists believe it came from a NASA second stage Delta rocket. Private companies drive new space race at NASA. NASA says it soon may be able to launch astronauts from U.S. soil to the International Space Station. Important project milestones are coming up for NASA's two commercial crew partners, Boeing and SpaceX, with several flight tests, including manned missions slated for 2018. Boeing is working on the CST-100 Starliner. The spacecraft can seat up to seven and is meant to send astronauts to the space station. Three Starliners are currently in production, with one set to carry astronauts next year. The pressurized vessel can be reused ten times. SpaceX, which has flown cargo missions to the ISS with its Dragon spacecraft, plans to use the Dragon 2 to send astronauts to space. The Dragon 2 is the latest version of SpaceX's capsule model. It's designed to seat seven astronauts. Boeing and SpaceX must show that both of their systems are ready to start regular flights to the space station in order to meet NASA's requirements. SpaceX has its first test flight set for February, while Boeing's launch is planned for June. Scientists hope to launch interstellar fleet of laser-propelled spacecraft. A hit team of renowned scientists, Silicon Valley elites, and a billionaire businessman have come together to launch a fleet of postage stamp-sized interstellar spacecraft. Sounds like the pitch for a bad Bond movie, right? Well, if it was, 007 would have his hands full. Because this team includes scientist supreme Dr. Stephen Hawking, Russian billionaire Yuri Milner, and Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg. All technology, including the camera for the tiny interstellar spacecraft, will be placed inside a postage stamp-sized chip. Called a star chip, this device would come with a light sail to form a nanocraft. This sail has a surface that would use Earth-based laser light to propel it along. The lasers would come from a mile-wide laser array potentially situated 13,000 feet above sea level in the Atacama Desert in South America. Using light energy from the 100-gigawatt laser array, the team plans to send a fleet of these nanocrafts to our closest star system, Alpha Centauri. If successful, a nanocraft could travel at 20% of the speed of light, or 134.2 million miles per hour, using laser light propulsion. At that speed, a nanocraft could traverse the 25 trillion miles to Alpha Centauri in a matter of decades, while a current spacecraft would take thousands of years. Dubbed Breakthrough Starshot, Milner has invested around $100 million in the nanocraft concept. However, it will still potentially cost billions and could take up to 30 years to get a swarm of the devices into space if the concept is shown to be successful. No more photography duty for astronauts. 
The Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency has developed a cute floating camera drone that can lighten the workload of astronauts on the International Space Station. The Int Ball weighs 1 kilo and has a diameter of 15 centimeters. It uses the existing drone technology, miniaturized altitude control sensors and actuators in an all-in-one module. The Int Ball arrived at the International Space Station last month and is remotely controlled by the JAXA Tsukuba Space Center from the ground. In the future, the Int Ball is expected to take over photography duties from the space crew and will be able to operate autonomously. At the moment, astronauts on the ISS spend around 10% of their time just taking photos and videos. With this camera drone's help, they now perhaps will have a bit more personal time in space. Japanese astronaut grows taller. A new astronaut aboard the ISS thought he may have some issues returning to Earth after gaining some extra height. Japanese astronaut Norishige Kanai mistakenly tweeted this week that he had grown 3.5 inches after spending three weeks on board the International Space Station. He later corrected that claim to 0.8 inches. In space, astronauts' spines often expand due to the lack of gravity. This results in a height increase. Height returns to normal after the astronaut returns to Earth. Astronauts can also experience a loss of bone minerals and muscle mass. Nayi was worried that he might not be able to fit into his return craft, a Russian Soyuz, after thinking he had grown over a quarter foot, but now he should be just fine. NASA wants a space station near the moon. A moon station? Yeah, why not? NASA says it plans to build a station for astronauts orbiting the moon. The project is called the Lunar Orbital Platform Gateway. NASA's 2019 fiscal year budget request calls for launching the first element, the Power and Propulsion Module, into space in 2022. Two additional launches by 2025 to add habitation, logistics, and airlock functions would complete the station. The gateway would be put in a near-rectilinear halo orbit, an orbit in cislunar space that could be used as a staging area for future missions. The platform's position would let astronauts control telerobots on the moon's surface that could be used to explore craters as well as carry out other experiments. Maybe we should try a moon landing. That's never been done before.